Hi guys, this is JJ Lockhart and thank you for joining me again today. Um, today I will be sharing a portrait that I recently did of my mother. Uh, I got some cool new art supplies, I got some paint brushes, and um, I decided to work with watercolors to begin, just to set some solid colors down. And as you can see, my tray is all cracked with my watercolors, but they used to be in tubes and it was just really hard for me to get the paint out of the tubes. So then I just created my own palette. So that's why it looks kind of funny, but it's just um, a, I guess a pill case that I popped off the tops and then I just squirted the paint in there and it dried. Um, but it was a very quick and easy way to make a palette and I was able to sort of customize what colors I wanted and where I wanted it. So I really like how the watercolor palette turned out. So I decided that for this portrait, I was just gonna use um, the watercolors, um, like I said, to put on some base color. And uh, my mother had requested that I do um, pretty much everything in blues and grays, um, mostly blue, um, since that is her favorite color. And I have done other portraits like this um, for her. I've, I've done my sisters and myself, um, and they're pretty much the same where it's our face and it's sort of just paired or next to a flower, and it's usually our favorite flower. So the juxtaposition of our face with a flower is really nice with a very just white background, nothing fancy. Um, but just, I guess the flower just sort of symbolizes our femininity since in our family we're pretty much all females um, there's no and we don't have any brothers um, I, I just have one little brother but he's a lot younger than us so we we usually are just women hanging out so um, I feel like the flower just really represents us and um, we each all of our portraits the ones I've created it's just a simple portrait with the flower on the side and my mom requested tulips, so I don't know if you can see, I just have like the pencil drawing right now of the tulips, um, but I will be adding color to that as well, setting down all the base colors. And um, the cool part about watercolors is that you can easily go ahead and put colors, but also start putting some tones in there and um, values. Uh, so you can start developing the lights and the darks and you just, I just keep layering and layering and um, trying to let certain areas dry in between so it doesn't just become one big mess. And um, what I did is I just let the area dry for a while before I started going in there and putting more detail with my um, Prismacolor color erase pen. And it's just like a, a light blue. And I'm going in there and just further getting detail, pulling a little more blue here and there. Um, since I had a, a nice base color um, with the watercolors, now I'm just building it a little bit, a little bit more. Getting my dark starkers. Finding the lips a little bit more and the eyes. Just giving the eyes a little more shape. That's one uh, very awesome thing about those color erase uh, Prisma colors is that you can easily erase. So as I'm going in there and just defining the shape overall a little better and adding my my more darker color, my more blues in there. Um, if I mess up, the easy part is I just erase it rather quickly. There's, it's not very hard to erase. And 
and I just keep adding more details. And just getting the colors deeper and deeper, adding more and more, adding more details. And I'm also using uh, Copic markers. And the nice part about the Copics is that they work very similar to watercolor that you can apply layers and they get darker and darker so I have been enjoying this combo of using watercolors and prismacolors and uh, copic markers so I'm just going in with the uh, blues and grays Adding a little bit of shadow, a little more shadow under the nose with the uh, Greek Copic, Copic marker. And filling in the lips a little bit more. And like I said, the easy part is I can just erase it if I go a little too dark. When drawing this, I started, um, well, I, around this time, I started playing around a little bit more with the hair and figuring out about how dark I wanted it. So um, at some point soon, what I'll do is I start going back into the hair area, just because I know that I want the hair darker than the face, and I don't want to darken the face too much because I do want that nice contrast of a crisp, clean face with the dark hair so sometimes what I'll do is I'll, I'll skip further working on an area just to start developing a little bit more the darker areas of the of the image or of the uh, portrait that I'm working on so that way I can later go in and balance it out a little bit better and just further developing the tulips giving them a little more shape. And I do want my tulips to stay fairly light. I don't want them too dark. I'm starting to go into the darker areas of the hair. Adding a little more definition. And hair is one of the hard things to sort of pull off. I'm still working on trying to get my hair 
I guess the style that I do my hair a little a little more cleaner I guess I try and think of hair as more of chunks instead of individual strands but sometimes it's a little bit hard to just develop the overall so I'm still working on that and then uh, right now I'm putting in a little more details into the eyes um, I, I definitely want the eyes to pop out the most so I'm trying to add the darkest darks in there first so I can see how dark I want the eyelashes and uh, the area around the eye so that way I can balance that out in the hair. I really like that deep blue pen And now that I've really developed how dark I want to go, um, using that um, ink pen, um, that way I can really see how dark it is, I decided I want to add more color to my hair. So I just went back with some watercolor. And I just started layering some more blues in there. Adding a variety of t tones of blue. Some are a little purplish, some a little bit more teal. Just defining the shapes a little bit better with a darker uh, Prismacolor. I think that's a indigo blue Prismacolor. Just better defining the clumps of hair. And then going back and adding a little bit, a little more mid-tone areas in the eye. Just so it isn't a complete contrast of just the really pale skin with the really dark eyelashes. But now that I have my lights and my darks, I can go in there and adjust the mid-tones a little bit more. Slowly but surely, it's getting there, huh? Just keep, just keeping, keeping the layers and layers after layers. That's also the nice thing about working with um, watercolors, uh, Copic markers, and prismas is that you kind of have a variety of of colors and textures you can work with. They're all very similar, so they work very well cohesively but it's not like you feel like you're using the same like pencil or the same um, color over and over again. You can add a variety by using those three. And I added a little bit of purple there on the tips. And 
there. I'm just using like a one of my blue lead um, mechanical pencils. And just to get a little bit finer detail just because the point on the lead pencil is a lot thinner. The only thing is I had to be real careful because it kept the lead kept breaking so you'll see I keep clicking away at the pen very frequently. I just need to remember to be a little bit lighter handed. And now I'm adding a little bit of highlights. I'm using just a regular white paint marker. course it blobbed everywhere but I had a handy rag to just clean it up And I'm also using my white Sakura Jelly Roll for the smaller highlights. Nice part also about um, using Copics with the uh, Prismacolors is that what I'll do is sometimes I'll just lay the uh, color down with the Prismacolor and then since the Copic is um, an, an alcohol based marker um, sometimes what it'll do is it'll help blend out some of the roughness of the uh, Prismacolor. So that's an interesting technique too to sort of smooth out some of the lines produced by the roughness of the Prismacolor, especially since sometimes we can't really sharpen the Prismacolors that well, otherwise they break, so you have to be sort of careful. So that sort of is a good way of putting down the color and sort of helping blend it with the Copic, so that way you don't have to produce such a really fine line with the Prismacolor since, you know, they're so difficult to sharpen. Adding a little bit of the of the blue ink and this pen I think I just got it from eBay or something like that but it's just like a blue fountain ink pen and it's really nice it has like a nice um, fountain ink tip pen and it comes with little cartridges ink cartridges um, it's, re it's really nice if I can find it I'll, uh, I'll put a link in the description Just going in there and just trying to add a little more detail to the hair, getting the the darks even deeper. And 
adding a little bit more to the, to the midtones. And there it is. And there's a little bit more on the detail, so you can see it a little bit closer up. And I tried to lay most of the material that I used around it so you can kind of get an idea of what I used. And of course the final touch. I just want to thank you so much for watching my video and um, I'll see you guys next time. Bye! Mm -hmm.